Well, it's looking very smart if you go by the pictures, but of course it's looking into the detail that's the problem. I should also explain where I am, Michelle, because the last time I spoke to you, I was nine floors down in the newsroom here at the BBC. Well, I've come right to the top, to the eighth floor. This is by Radio 1 Extra and Radio 1, two of the big BBC youth music stations. So I'm feeling a little overdressed, but I'll plough on anyway. Let me introduce you to Bruno Garces from BBC Brazil and Simon Monday, who's a sports reporter for um, Radio 1. The pictures look great, but then the pictures would look great. There are reports of problems. What were they? Well, there was a bit of flooding. I mean, there were problems with the lifts, uh, with the turnstiles. Uh, but the the accounts of the official accounts is that everything will be done by the deadline set by FIFA, which is the 24th of May, and fully ready by the friendly game against England on the 2nd of June. And are, you, are your listeners and your users confident? Well, I think somewhat confident, but you know, there's a, there's even a catchphrase that became popular in Brazil that when en whenever anything goes wrong, they say, "Can you imagine it at the time of the World Cup?" <laughs> so that's more, that's more or less the feeling in the country. Right, and Simon, I mean, you know, big stadiums often have problems. This is nothing new. I just wonder whether football fans care as much about the as much as the administrators and the politicians do about hitting every last deadline. I don't. I, I certainly don't think the fans care as much. We were, we were out in Ukraine for the Euro last summer and everyone was excited about going to Brazil which is essentially the spiritual home of football and, and like you say there are uh, a history of problems when it comes to this type of thing. Wem Wembley, I mean the uh, American are four months I think uh, behind initially scheduled try four years for Wembley um, and, and three times over budget it didn't even get started to even start knocking it down yeah. until about six months before it was due to finish. So it really is uh, not comparable. And I think Wembley could knock one out as well as they did, then America and I will be fine. Well, you're talking about England. England are going to play the first game when the stadium is full. Because actually, though the pictures look good, the stadium wasn't full, was it, for the official opening? No, no. It was about 30,000 people, and now it's going to be 79,000, mm -hmm. which is still far below the initial capacity, which was of more than 100,000. But didn't 200,000 was the 19? The 1950 Cup traumatic uh, final against Uruguay when we've lost. You look like you're still yeah. feeling it. It's going to be okay, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. My, my <laughs> grandmother still talks about that game. She was there. She, she talks about it with tears in her eyes. Mm. So it's still a national trauma. So right. let's not even talk about results and all that. And one of the things we're seeing here is that as Set Blatter has insisted on the World Cup uh, being taken to developing countries like South Africa and Brazil, it's also now being seen as a almost a trial of the country, isn't it? In a way that I think. Germany was exposed to, you know, back in 2006. I think that's absolutely right. And if again, if I mention Ukraine, you look at that last year, the only big um, event that they had had in that country prior to last summer's Euros was uh, the Eurovision Song Contest. And I don't think you could quite put that in the same league. And still a hard one to stage. It's still a hard one to stage, <laughs> but let's not put it up there with Euro 2012. No. And uh, Euro 2012, before that, there was all sorts of problems with, um, you know, there were claims about were, were there going to be problems with racism and, and all these type of things. In the event, the, the whole event went off superbly. Ukrainians themselves feel that it was a huge success and showcased their country and um, to be somewhere that can be visited. And it's, it's like a brochure for the country. And I, I'm absolutely convinced Brazil 2014 will even be better than that. But when you're creating a brochure for your country, you might get nervous when you realise what's going to be in that brochure. Do you think Brazilians are confident of the country that we're all going to discover? Because, of course, many of us know it reasonably well anyway, but the whole world is going to see it in a way it hasn't seen it before. I think there's a great deal of anxiety, there are worries, there are concerns, but I think people are somewhat confident. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, there are jokes and there's a certain weariness of maybe we won't get it fully right in time, there will be some details, but I think overall people are confident. And well, England aren't even there, are they? They're not having a brilliant uh, qualification, but in theory they should be, so who's going to win? Well, uh, I would say uh, it's certainly not England. Uh, <laughs> Brazil have a chance, but uh, if you'd have to put your money on anyone, I would Brazil. say uh, Argentina. Lionel Messi finally oh, stepping up so. and, and fulfilling his... That would his, go down uh, well, whatever job. state the stadium's in. Both of you, thank you very much oh. indeed. And one other thing to mention, uh, Michelle, I covered the World Cup in South Africa for the BBC, and loads of journalists were waiting to tell several stories. Serious crime and poor organisation, and neither materialised. And I think with any big event like this, we should wait to see what happens rather than second guess what we think will happen. Yeah, you're already making predictions, though, you three, for what's going to happen. Well, in you know, that's what football Cup. fans do. You just couldn't resist that. Thank you very much. See you